So we've talked about it. The current market is wild. But how should you treat this market if you're a buyer or a seller? Let's discuss that one. Hey guys, I'm Nicholas Schrader, one half of the Schrader Brothers Berkshire Hathaway Results Realty. And in this episode, I want to talk about kind of an ongoing topic we've been discussing is the Wild West market that our real estate market is currently in right here in Central Florida. If you've watched some of the other ones, we've talked about how to treat it as a buyer, what to do as a seller, kind of. Well, we're going to kind of put those together here because it does change on a regular basis. And the more and more interaction that we have in that market, we become better equipped to know how to handle it. So we're going to share some of those tips. So let's start on the buying side. You feel that buying is better than renting. Always true. You are aware that you will probably be buying at a little bit higher price right now, but you're still ready to do it because buying is still better than renting. So what do you need to do in hopes of getting your offer accepted. And we did a video on this, but we're gonna do a couple highlights here. Be flexible, remove contingencies, and be aggressive with your offer. Now, what do I mean by those? So be flexible. Now, does that seller need to move right away? If they do, try and speed up your closing time as much as possible. Does that seller not yet have a house to move into? So if that's the case, maybe you need to do what's known as a lease back and allow that seller to stay in that home just a little bit longer, even after closing, or you're, maybe you extend the closing date out. Just some flexibility there. Remove contingencies. Everybody knows that we go in and we get a home inspection done, and if there's some things on there that you don't like, a lot of times you will go back to the seller and ask them to either make some repairs or to contribute to the bottom line in hopes that you will be able to take care of those uh, worries once you do close on the home. So some credits. Right now, a seller doesn't necessarily have to do that because in a lot of cases, there are multiple offers. And lastly, be aggressive with your offer. Traditionally, you submit an offer in hopes of getting the negotiation process started. Right now, it's a little bit different. You really need to go in now with either your best offer or really, really close to your best offer. In a lot of cases, homes are only sitting on the market for 24 to 48 hours and they're receiving multiple offers. So that listing agent isn't necessarily going back to everyone saying, okay, now we have multiple offers, give us your best offer. So it's kind of a one and done thing now where you really need to submit your best offer right from the start. It's not necessarily the most comforting thing to do. I understand as a buyer of anything, you wanna get the best deal that you can, but in the current market, Maybe not the best strategy to go with is going with a low ball, hope the seller counters. Because right now, countering mm, doesn't happen a whole lot. So be aggressive with your first offer, give them the best that you got right from the start, and then work on it after that. And if you remember, obviously, uh, if you feel that you're having to offer more, then hopefully when the appraisal comes in, if the appraisal is lower, then you can have possibly a little bit of renegotiation at that time. So just something to look forward to. Again, you want to go ahead, put your best offer in, get that property wrapped up and in hopes of moving forward and eventually getting towards a closing date. So as a seller, you hold all the cards, right? So what do you need to do as a seller? Well, it's a seller's market. You can stand tall. So what do I mean by stand tall? I mean, you're probably going to get multiple offers on your home. So you probably won't have to do any ins inspection requests after you do accept an offer and they come in with those inspection requests, you know, whether it be to fix this or fix that, whether it's major or minor. In a lot of cases, you won't have to worry about that because again, you hold all the cards and you can say, sorry, I'm not going to do it. I have multiple offers. I shall just move on to the next offer. It's a good position to be in. The second thing you need to understand as a seller is that Understand that the best price isn't necessarily the best offer. So what does that mean? Terms, we've talked about this in multiple videos as well. Look at the terms that a buyer is offering. Like we just said to the buyer, do you need a certain amount of time to be able to move out of that home? You know, maybe it's not 30 days. Maybe you don't have that new home lined up yet. So 
maybe the extending of the closing date is something that you need. So that's a term that could be more appealing to you. Maybe you do have that home wrapped up and you need to close sooner. So who can close faster? You know, is it going to save you money by being able to close faster? And that savings of money can be reflected in the purchase price from the buyer to you. So understand that the best price isn't always the best offer. So in a market like right now, seller's market, limited inventory, you do hold the cards, but just be very, very cautious and overlook those, or don't overlook, but look very, very strongly at all offers and understand that all the terms do matter not always just the price. Just because someone comes in with a crazy high price doesn't mean that the home's gonna appraise. You might have to adjust that price later anyway if you continue to work with that person, unless they are willing to pay over the appraised value, which means that someone is physically and literally meaning or wanting to pay more than something is actually worth. It is happening, but it's still not favorable. So if you're gonna have to sell your home over what it's actually worth according to the bank's appraisal, know that you know that person has to come out of their pocket because the bank doesn't lend on that. So just a few tips as a buyer and a seller how to handle the current market. Guys, we do these videos each and every Monday in hopes of informing you about what's going on in the real estate market, helping you live local, live flow life. Just keep you informed, let you know, you know what's going on. So if we can ever help you, please reach out to us. Our website is available by going to liveflowlife.com. If you enjoy the videos, we'd appreciate it if you like, subscribe, comment, um, click the notification bell, whatever format you're on, we appreciate it. Our videos are all on YouTube. You can get there by going to liveflowlifevideos.com. I'll take you right to our YouTube page. We put these videos on our Facebook page. We put these videos on our Rumble page. We try and spread them around. And again, so if you just show some love, we greatly appreciate it. Live Flow Life, once again, is where you'll find us. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Happy selling. Happy buying. If we can ever help you, reach out. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.